One day I'm gonna have to do a podcast and ask you, because I mean, you know, as a gay man, what what are your thoughts as it relates to sort of, again, you know, outspoken I activist, homosexual people getting owned by the trans movement and like it's not enough after the years that you guys fought to get the equality uh, that you have. Don, as that, I told that, you. That people probably pretend doesn't exist. As I told you eight years ago, all I ever wanted was exact equality under the law. That's what right. we've got. You can call, now we're equal, you can call me whatever you want. You know what I mean? Like you, yeah. you could call me well, a it right feels now, like it wouldn't me. mean anything to me. <laughs> So we had to bleep out that word, but he <laughs> thinks that it's okay for Don Jr. to call him a gay slur yeah. because he has the right to get married now. So that's yeah. all that matters. Interesting ideas. Yeah. Scott of Pennsylvania, Jake Javits of New York. Yeah. He's, a distant, he's a distant cousin of mine, actually. Oh, yeah. Jacob great, Javits, yeah. Great man. Yeah. Great man. My mo Oh, he's got a phone. Oh, now go. let me show you. Yeah, show us this phone. This, phone, this, this old. Is, Samsung makes it. I saw. I visited that company in Korea. Yeah. <laughs> and it's ringing right now. <laughs> it is. Oh shit! Hello. <laughs> hey, Cannon, where are you? <laughs> Look at Dave's already upset. See the good sign. Oh, oh, you didn't have a game today. We have two. We have, I had to get up. <laughs> I got a list. You got a doubleheader this coming Saturday. <laughs> How did you do? <laughs> he answers a phone call from his son. Mm -hmm. And like, look, sometimes if there's like an emergency and you know that like you're waiting on a call and you communicate ahead of time with the person that you're doing a show with, you know, maybe an exception can be made, right? But the, there. His son called and they're just having like a mm -hmm. super pleasant conversation about baseball. Yeah. Right? Well, he was desperate in that moment for a pleasant conversation. And it was provided. It was so The funny. only thing better would have been like if he's like, sorry, Dave, I gotta answer this. Hey? No, sorry, you have the wrong number. But like, you wanna talk? <laughs> I'm interviewing Larry Elder, and I'm still on the left. And Larry is really, he's really a, he described himself as a small L libertarian, but in essence, a conservative. And I start talking to him about systemic racism. And I'm sure many of you have seen the clip, but he just beat me senseless with facts. And I kept saying, well, systemic racism has to exist because there's racism and there's a system, and those are two words, and I put them next to each other, and there's <laughs> gotta be something there. And he just beat me senseless. And I truly believe this. My, my best and worst career moment were at the exact same time. And I don't know how many people can say that, but it, it was obviously my worst career moment because I went into a fight, an intellectual battle, not ready, not armed properly to, to argue with the guy who is a fact machine. But then I think it was my best moment too because when I went into the control room after and we had a big crew at the time, it was before my show was fully independent with all these producers and everybody said to me, we weren't airing it live, it wasn't live streamed, everybody said, Dave, we'll edit that before we put it up tomorrow. And without even thinking about it, I was like, no, that was a true moment. And if I am to do this as an interviewer and someone that wants to get ideas across, I know I don't look good, but we have to air it. Uh, when wow. Dave Rubin was working here, his producer was his husband, David Janet. So he just threw his own husband under the bus because he just claimed that David Janet said, we'll, we'll edit that video. Yeah. Why would you do that, Dave? No, Why would you throw uh, your own husband under the bus like that? Okay, so look, I, I don't care who makes the decision, but what it goes to is mindset, okay? Yeah. So there's two. Amazing parts of that video, I'm so glad you found it. Yeah. So number one is him saying, look, everybody makes some mistakes. I, I made one earlier today, we were joking around about it. And being self-deprecating about that is no problem. That's why when you stopped talking about self-deprecation, I was like, oh, that's not an issue. No, this no is but different. this is different. Yep. He didn't say I made a mistake, he said I went in unprepared. Lim yes. I didn't know what the hell I was talking about and I was intellectually overmatched. Well, then why did you go in unprepared? And so that's like, all he did. I mean, the guy has never had an original thought if his life depended on it. Like he that was the thing that was incredibly frustrating about him, right? Because while he was here, he would come in for a 30 minute a week show that was a hundred percent prepared and produced by his husband, who was his producer, and he'd be like, Why why aren't I making a lot of money doing this crap? And it's like, because you don't deserve it, bro. Like, read something, have an original thought, do actual analysis. 